I want to start with a very puzzling uh, midrash, uh, puzzling in more than one way. First of all, one piece of this puzzle is we don't know where it is. We haven't really found it in any type of midrashic source, but there are later books that quote it as a midrash because its style of language is in the, is in the style of midrash. So this midrash essentially says like this. It says that if God would have commanded us to chop wood all day, so we would do it. That's the midrash, the main part of it that we're dealing with. And uh, we want to appreciate what is the message behind such a statement. Now, on the surface, I think it's puzzling to, to really understand what they're trying to say, because what's God? God is the king, God is in charge, God is the boss. When you work somewhere, if that boss tells you, and it's your job, so, and if he tells you, you know, clean up, sweep up, fold this, take out the trip, whatever he tells you to do as an employee, you would do it, right? Anybody would argue with that? I don't know today what's, what's correct, what's not correct, because everything changes in every generation, it's like different. Every 10 years, you gotta recheck what's normal. So is it, is it still normal to, that your boss tells you what to do and you have to do it? Because that's maybe a very strong term, have to, maybe you choose to do it conveniently when he says to do it. Is that what goes on these days? Probably. Hopefully at least. So basically the point is that, what's the Kiddush of this teaching? If Hashem would say to you, chop wood, you would do it. Of course you would, you do whatever Hashem says. Nachon? Right? Unfortunately we do what Hashem doesn't say also, but that's not our topic tonight. Tonight it's a lovey-dovey topic. So if Hashem tells you chop wood, you would do it. So what is the praise? What is, this, what is the praise here about us as God's servants that if God would even have told us to chop wood, we would do it? What is the praise there? Now, this idea I would like to connect with the mistake on some level of Korach and a lesson for us today in how we can avoid such a mistake in our life. So let's analyze. What is chopping wood all about? Now, again, you should fill in that Example, because that was a big thing in the olden days, you know, but chopping wood was like the job. Today, fill it in with, I don't know, being a, you know, doing something with a computer, a program, whatever today's essential job, but it's not the glamour job. It's not like the boss, you know, the boss, those, I like those boss shirts. You know, if you can't be a boss, at least have one, boss. <laughs> now, it's not the, pick any job that you can think of that you've done in the past. You don't have to confess now the jobs you've done that were, you know, the, the little, the little, like, the little, what do you call, soldier type of job. But all those jobs out there that are necessary for things to function, but they're not glamorous, you're not the boss, that's what they mean. Because chopping wood is not glamorous, it's not like a, you're not going to become the king, you're not going to be the big CEO. Chopping wood is basically simple, like the mailman, or working in the mail department. You know, you have a big company, IBM, Amazon, somebody's got to work in that mail department, you know, making sure that, what's that guy's name again? Not the base, be Bezos, right? Bezos. That, the that when it says Bezos, it goes in the Bezos box. Because you don't want to mess up, you get fired, he's, he's the boss. So you don't want to put it in the wrong box. So someone has to make sure that his mail gets to him. So, but it's not glamorous. And that's what they mean over here with, if Hashem would have told us to chop wood all day, we would do it. Because he's Hashem and we have to do it. But there's something, the deeper point over here is this. Really, we all seek, we all want, there's an inner desire for us to feel like we have accomplished something, that we're doing something, that we're going somewhere, we're building. You know, Rabbi Nachman says a statement, if you believe you could destroy, then be smarter, <laughs> a bit smarter, and believe you could build. The greatest thing we as human beings can do is make ourselves better and make this world better. We can be builders. Unfortunately, we can be foolish and destroy. We see a lot of that around the world today. But ultimately, our greatest accomplishment is to be a builder. We have an inner drive, an inner pull to be someone, to be something, to seek out truth and to live a meaningful, purposeful life. Now, what could be more purposeful, what can be greater than fulfilling the will of our maker, fulfilling the will of Hashem? Can there be anything greater than that? <clears throat> the greatest thing we could accomplish, the greatest purpose, the greatest everything is to do what Hashem wants. And that's what this Midrash is actually telling us. You want meaning in your life? So ultimately, meaning in your life comes from fulfilling the will of God. If God's will would have been such that our job is, was just to chop wood all day, we would do it, and we would get the greatest pleasure we could imagine from it because we would know it was, that was what God wants from us. And that's the ultimate we can accomplish, doing what God wants from us, His will. Now, when you apply that to uh, the way we approach having a job, having a career, trying to make our mark on the world, some of us are just making a messy mark and really messing up the world. When you put all the messy marks together, you got a mess. So we have to be careful. What type of message do we want to leave off when we, when we leave behind? What kind of message do we want to pass on to our children? What do we want to accomplish in our life? Do we want to be boss? Is that what we're, what we're all about, to be boss? So Korah had a lot of this happening. And everyone in their life, in every society, there is this hierarchy of, you know, I'm on top, I'm on the bottom. But ultimately, 
anyone that thinks for more than a moment, we will understand that we cannot all be the boss of a company. There's, there's many roles to fill, and everyone has to choose a role. Clown Yisrael in the desert, and, and today, mankind as a whole, and the Jewish people in particular, in order for us to fulfill our purpose as a whole, we know we're part of Klal Yisrael, we have a general purpose. But the particulars, for each and every one of us, we have to find our, our area where we excel, where we can give, where we have what to offer. And we're each unique in that sense, but we can't all look to be on the top. If everyone wants to be on top, then there is no one to do the work necessary. Now, Korach was very smart, very talented, and very rich. He must have had a good shidduch. But the question is, what was he all about? It says that he was unbelievable, his job. He had an unbelievable job. Who knows what job he had? Let's, anybody, any takers? Rabbis are allowed. What was Korach's job? He wasn't chopping wood, he wasn't flipping burgers, and he wasn't... Uh, you know, working in the mail department. He, was, he had a real good job. What was his job? He was one of the few that were carrying the Aron. The holiest, holiest thing in the world where the Hashem, the Shekhinah, rested between the two Kruvim. He That's what his job was, to carry that, that ark, the ark. Could you get better than that? He had an awesome job. Unbelievable job. Top four jobs in the world. There was all, cause three other people, I guess, that were helping him. That's it. That's it. Now, what was his problem? What was his big problem? Why wasn't he happy? Why wasn't he satisfied? Egotistic. Ah, ego. Ego is the killer of everything. That ego comes and just messes things up. Unbelievable. Thank God I don't have one. <laughs> anyway, so the question is, and anyone gets, gets more specific, within that ego, the ego was really the, the, the cause of his flaw and his mistake. But what was, what was his problem? Why wasn't he satisfied? Why wasn't he happy? No? Any takers? You know, since you guys are thinking about it, I'll give you time to think. I'll tell you a little bit of an analogy, my way of saying a similar type of idea. If you do your research and you look at how life was once upon a time thousands of years ago, it will come out that even the male guy, the guy that works in the male department, he has a better life, a better quality of life than the, one of the greatest king of a thousand years ago, thousands of years ago. He, we live better than kings. All of Each and every one of us here lives better than a king. I, every morning, have unbelievable cappuccino. I got the espresso machine, I do the double with a little, little bit of milk, a little bit of sugar, some splendor for my diet. You know, everyone, you got to try. And the kings didn't have an espresso machine in their house. I do the ice, I do the hot, I, I got it all. You know, we, we have running water, we have air conditioning, we live better than kings. So why aren't we all so happy? You know what the problem is? You know why I'm not so happy? It's that king next door. He's got a better, bigger palace than me. He's got a bigger car than me. Two, he's got two of them, actually. You know, it's him that makes me less happy because he has more. It's, it's, a, it's a relative happiness because everyone lives like kings, so we're not happy with living like kings. We have to live with super kings. So that's why we're not happy today is because of the guy next to me. He makes me, he, he somehow encroaches on my happiness. He takes away my happiness. And that's foolish. That's nonsense. How could someone that's separate from me, that has nothing to do with me, how can he take away my happiness? Because I'm a fool. I let him take away my happiness because of the selfish and ego and all of that. So how do we solve the problem? So that's what we, the gonna, lesson we're going to take out is how to solve that problem. But that was Korach's problem, in my opinion. He had the number one job in the world, but he had a job. He was a worker. He had a job. He wasn't the boss. Who was the boss? Who was the boss? Don't give me this mystical stuff. Who was the boss? He had the best position in the world that you could have, except for one other position. He wasn't the king. And he wasn't the coin guttle. He was like the number three guy in all of Israel. Not happy. Why? Because they're number two and number one. Why am I not happy with my two-bedroom apartment? Because the guy across the street has a four-bedroom apartment. That's it. That's, that's the problem we have. We're not happy with what we have because the other guy has more. And the funny thing is we think the other guy has more. But who says the other guy has more? How many people that are wealthy are miserable? Many. The money is not giving him a better life. Being the boss doesn't make him a better person or give him a better life. And if we stop falling for that fallacy, we will have the good life that Hashem already gave us. Korach had it all. He was missing nothing but a wife that knew what to say because his wife, of course, was the cause of a lot of problems. His wife fired him up. What? You're not the boss? You let Moshe do that to you? And, of course, he went all fired up, and that was it. That's one approach, but that's not the approach we're dealing with now because we have to be politically correct. So we're not going to talk about that so much today, although I just did, but we'll get to my point. So Korach was not happy because he was just a worker. And the boss was Moshe, and Aaron was higher position. Now, why was Moshe and Aaron a higher position than him? What was with them? So the truth is, 
they understood what you said the first time. They understood that Hashem is the boss. This is Hashem's world, and the only one with a boss t-shirt is, of course, not Hashem, he doesn't wear t-shirts, but the only one that's boss is Hashem. He's the boss. We're all just workers. We're all just chopping wood. If we understood that we're all just doing the rotson of Hashem, he, he has many things that he wants and needs. We're there to fulfill that particular thing that we can fulfill, whether it's taking care of the mail or the garbage or whether we're in charge. But it's, it's only we're there to fulfill and the place that Hashem wants us to fulfill and to do rotson Hashem. And so if whoever understands that secret, that secret of life and of purpose is if Hashem would have told me to chop wood all day, I would do it happily because it's all about doing what Hashem wants. If Korach understood that he had a divine mission to fulfill, his divine mission, his unique mark that he could make on the world, he would have been happy with that. How could you not be happy with a divine mission given to you from Hashem? The fact that we're not all the same is, is, is the way Hashem made us. Now, God made us all, but we, and we are all equal, but we're not all the same because we can equally fulfill the potential that Hashem gave us. Moshe had a different role than Korach. And that was his mistake, not accepting that reality that my job is to recognize what I can do, not to be obsessed with what I cannot do.